So um, let's get going and uh, start here with the academic side of things. Um, so tomorrow uh, is the end of the marking period, or actually today was, because tomorrow is the national testing day for the PSAT. Uh, as usual, if you're looking for grades, you go to the website that's uh, uh, shown there. Um, we do uh, only post grades every two or three weeks uh, for a total of every five weeks for a marking period. Uh, and again, as a reminder, uh, as you're trying to counsel your, your uh, cadet, um, that basically they've had a fresh start since the 1st of October. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is, again, uh, encourage a mindset of staying on top of things uh, rather than trying to push them off. And so the grades from the first marking period are now locked in place. The second marking period grades will be posted on Friday. And uh, the young man then has a chance to change those grades uh, if they need to for the better, uh, maintain them if they're already pretty good. And, and then obviously there is an opportunity because we want to have authentic learning. Uh, it means that they do have a, a real opportunity to lower their grades too. So again, obviously we don't want to do that. Um, as a, as a, another way of saying this, that the grades are just a mark on the wall, uh, just because of the vagaries of our schedule right now, um, that uh, this week is a very odd week. Uh, there's only four class meetings that, that actually occurred out of the 11 for this marking period. And then, um, so our fault or, uh, or my fault on that. And so next, next year, we'll, we'll kind of slide this around a little bit so that maybe reflects uh, six class meetings out of 11 rather than four out of 11. So again, this, this marking period is pretty short. Uh, if you've been chatting with your cadet, uh, either after Parents Weekend or during Parents Weekend, um, you know, usually ask how are things going. Uh, if he's giving you kind of a, well, I think they're going okay type of answer, um, that's legitimate. Um, you, you know, with only four or five class meetings, um, you know, that, that's not a lot of time. Obviously, with this year being a little bit different, uh, where we do teach the young men in front of us, we've spent the first marking period uh, looking at holes in uh, knowledge based on our IXL uh, baseline testing, as well as kind of understanding the practical realities of being um, online last spring. And so those, those lessons we do take to heart um, and does in fact uh, color um, our, our future as we try to decide what to do for, for this semester and, and this year. So again, we, we, we understand and learn from our, our past uh, experiences. Uh, the National Testing Day, I spoke about that uh, earlier in passing. And so the uh, PSAT or the National Merit Scholarship Qualification Test uh, occurs tomorrow. It's a, it's a National Testing Day. Um, that affects grades 8 through 11, 8, 9, 10, 11. And so they'll be taking the appropriate version of the PSAT um, that could then qualify them for a National Merit Scholarship or they're just getting ready for it. So um, we do know that in, in the real world, in life, uh, that uh, there will be high value uh, tests. And uh, while we, we shy away from uh, you know, living from test to test, certainly uh, we, we owe it to our cadets to train them to deal with the stress of a test um, that, that could admit them to a college, it could one day help them in career advancement, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so starting at younger ages, making sure they understand how to properly prepare, those, prepare for those tests. Uh, our seniors are, um, and postgraduates should be in a position to have um, a college uh, application ready to go for early action or early decision. Um, and I'm hearing from the college counselor um, that that's exactly what they're shooting for. Um, and, uh, and so to help them with that, uh, tomorrow as the uh, underclassmen are worried about the future, um, our 12th graders and postgraduates will actually be uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's uh, in their college selections as well as uh, college applications. So at least at the very least, they understand how to do, do, do a college application, get one under their belt, and uh, the kind of anxieties that come from the unknown will start to fade away. And then our youngest guys, the guys that are in grade seven, uh, we're checking our, the basic skills, and then we'll be doing a little bit of a class bonding project as, uh, as those uh, cadets are, are oftentimes, you know, they're, they're the smallest in stature, uh, but we, we, we certainly don't forget about those guys either. The SAT that was um, postponed uh, on October 3rd 
uh, has been rescheduled for this Saturday. And so uh, we, we, had, we had already received delivery of all our testing supplies. We had approval from the college board to uh, postpone the test for 14 days. And so we're on course to essentially administer the test in the same rooms um, with the same proctors that we had um, uh, already arranged for a couple of weeks ago. And that, that's a top-down thing. That includes making sure that breakfast is served, making sure that um, meds are administered as necessary, and again, walking the young man through that process. Uh, there are a uh, small number of cadets that are looking at the ACT and the SAT. Um, for either for the 24th of October and, or the 7th of November. Both of those are off campus, but off campus usually just means within three or four miles of, of our campus. And so, um, you know, if that affects your young man, uh, we do have those, those plans in place. So um, kind of a lot of things ru running through, through here. Um, the, uh, actually right tonight, uh, the college counselor and the athletic director are also working uh, through, um, which is why the college or the athletic director won't be here. Um, he's actually, uh, well, I'm probably, probably jumping ahead to that second, uh, that, that second bullet. Uh, normally, uh, he's working with our guys uh, to do college placement and career placement things on Mondays and Tuesdays, and we've moved that around a little bit to make sure that everyone has a fair time in the schedule. Um, but this evening, we actually have um, part of our Positive Coaching Alliance training. Uh, so we are a certified PCA school, which means that uh, not only do we do the usual, hey, here's a sportsmanship code, and um, you know, everyone agrees to, for, for good sportsmanship, but we actually have a deliberate plan uh, that's run through the athletic director and his coaches to uh, do workshops that really impact uh, our athletes. And so, um, so tonight, uh, as we speak, the Cadet Corps is here on campus um, in a uh, kind of a hundred person uh, Zoom meeting, um, talking about the dangers of social media, specifically as it impacts um, future collegiate athletes, as well as understanding uh, how um, professional athletics and social media are tied together. Again, um, on one level, it's certainly uh, teenager 101 type of, um, of worries about social media, but uh, as I think all we, as, as we know as parents, uh, a lot of times we have to have um, multiple perspectives uh, moving towards um, the, the same thing. And so our faculty talk about the dangers of social media and, and not understanding uh, the fear of missing out and how that impacts us. Our coaches are talking about it. Our TAC officers are talking about it on barracks. Um, and even the chaplain talks about that um, from, from the pulpit and in, in his uh, Bible studies, devotionals, and uh, Thursday night uh, talks. Um, also, uh, the other current issues that, that are uh, in, in the sports arena, really there is no uh, boundary. And so, um, so those issues uh, continue to uh, impact uh, us as a uh, community of guys. The um, upcoming athletic contests, um, the 13th and the 20th, um, today was cross country. I have not yet received a report as to how Fishburn, uh, the Fishburn cross country meet went. Hey, hey Jim, oh, sorry. Col Colonel Brown, I got an uh, email earlier prior to this meeting. We swept the cross country meet top five finishers. It was Excellent. awesome. So that's really exciting uh, for, for our guys. <laughs> and certainly we don't, um, we don't uh, um, minimize the, the, the power of competition. And so all the runners in, in, in the audience know exactly how important it is to, to see some uh, external uh, rewards, so to speak. And so that, that's great news. Uh, thank you, sir, for, for, um, for passing that along. Um, the cross country uh, sport in particular allows us to set up flights uh, of cadets. And so our guys are uh, interacting with other cadets, so to speak, uh, rather than members of the public or the other team. Um, similarly, we will have uh, the ability to uh, have another safe format for a cross-country match um, next, next week uh, at Christian Heritage Academy. Uh, the athletic director continues to uh, work potential schedules and uh, all those schedules, uh, as he's tried to message uh, throughout the, the, the fall, are very subject to changes in public health and um, the information that we get, uh, sometimes almost in real time. And so, so you know that he's 
Um, he's just as frustrated as, as you are about some of these last minute changes in schedules. So all, all schedules and schedule changes are uh, posted in HargraveSports.com as well as pushed out uh, via our constant contact or social media uh, when, when appropriate. Uh, we are operating what we call our phase three protocols, are uh, operating under our phase three protocols, which means that we have to, um, you know, again, uh, there, there are certain requirements uh, for us to, uh, you know, okay a, 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 a athletic match, whether that's soccer, football, cross country. Um, and uh, when we're able to, to, to uh, satisfy all those requirements, that then we'll be able to schedule uh, a match. Um, and then I think uh, for those of you that have been gutting through listening to my voice, I appreciate you not falling asleep and um, turn it over to Colonel Brown uh, for the military department um, uh, slides. Thanks. Uh, just uh, covering some things that the military department's tracking, and that is um, uh, senior picture day and fall sports photos on Monday, October 19th. Uh, the Senior Picture Day is a, a remake from earlier this year. Uh, you can see the notes on class rings. Uh, those, those have been up for a while, but again, just a reminder uh, for parents, uh, but also cadets. Uh, our uh, tax situation has uh, started to flush out. Uh, those are the names of the tax that will be assigned to uh, each company. Uh, and you can see that we had one arrive uh, yesterday, and he's uh, already hopped in the mix. That's Captain uh, Gallivan. And then uh, this coming uh, Monday, uh, Captain Washington arrives. He'll be part of Delta Company and also our new commandant arrives. So we're excited about getting them on, on board and getting them spun up. So that'll have the military department a, a full up round, if you will. So we're excited about that. Uh, I think that's it from the military department side. Jim, go to the next slide. So we're uh, winding down folks that, are, that were quarantined in the infirmary uh, and or at home. Uh, by the middle of this week, uh, most, uh, most cadets should be out of the infirmary having uh, served their quarantine. Uh, I did close, if you weren't, uh, um, if you didn't see it in the parent newsletter from last week, we've closed uh, the weekend, October 30th. Um, for obvious reasons, we really want to keep uh, minimize the boys coming and going and uh, being exposed to other folks. And uh, so we've closed that weekend. And then currently uh, we're assessing uh, the viability of pushing the semester to end, uh, to coincide with Thanksgiving day, uh, not Thanksgiving week. Um, and so uh, a lot of things that we have to uh, look at, but our, my staff is looking at that, uh, Dr. Tung and, and some of the department chairs. Uh, those are some of the impacts there. You can see, obviously, it would impact day cadets. Uh, but the main reason we're looking at it is uh, post Thanksgiving, after the boys being home for nine days, uh, with only three weeks after Thanksgiving till uh, the Christmas holiday, uh, can we try to end our semester before November, before Thanksgiving, uh, to eliminate some of that post Thanksgiving COVID potential transmission? Uh, it may require some uh, semester finals or assessments to uh, uh, happen after the Thanksgiving uh, day holiday. Uh, but again, the academic team is looking at all those, those options and the viability of this. And uh, I, I anticipate uh, being able to make that decision by the end of the week. And we'll certainly let everybody know uh, if that was to occur, uh, the cadets would be at home from the 25th of November to the 5th of January. Uh, that 25th of November is that Wednesday, um, right before Thanksgiving. So uh, just be advised of that. We're looking at it. And again, we'll, we'll get back with everybody. Uh, when we come back from the holiday break, uh, Christmas, regardless of what we do at Thanksgiving, uh, we will conduct COVID tests upon everybody's return. Uh, if the, unless there's a drastic change in our environment with respect to COVID, I plan on keeping all the weekends closed until spring break. Uh, and then we'll test everybody when they come back from spring break, and that pushes us right into uh, graduation. Uh, so that's uh, kind of the overview of, of our thoughts, and a lot of that has to do with uh, the cases we've had. Um, I've talked to an epidemiologist um, from a major university medical school uh, and, and got uh, his and his team's uh, perspective on 
you know, what's occurred at Hargrave, uh, what are some mitigating things we can do. Uh, these were, uh, this is a result of some of that conversation. Uh, also, we'll be doing some things on the barracks a little bit differently and uh, also um, uh, the way we run the, the core cadets during the day. Uh, but anyway, just want to kind of keep you up to date on that and uh, we'll continue to press forward um, and, and do so from a perspective of uh, keeping all the cadets safe and healthy as, as much as possible. So with that, I think we're opening up for questions, Jim. I have one question in uh, Q and A, and so uh, on the chat. Sorry, and um, so let me answer this question. Um, uh, the uh, college application workday for seniors and PGs are are actually as a group in classrooms. Um, so what we've done is taken the senior English instructors and the college uh, guidance advisors and put them in a group. Uh, together and so that's uh, the idea is that if they're in the rooms, maybe that's a little bit too much uh, temptation uh, for for um, distraction. So uh, next question is, uh, could we please expand on the new tack and commandants? Um, oops, can't spell. Where are they from? Interests, experiences. Um, sir? Sure, sure. I'll start with the Commandant. He is um, uh, 22 years in the Marine Corps. He's a Chief Warrant Officer, uh, retiring uh, from Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Um, he's been in um, administration and recruiting. Um, and he comes with uh, a wife and three kids, uh, one of which will attend Hargrave. Um, a couple dogs and a large fish tank. Um, solid individual, man of faith, uh, very open about his faith, uh, very excited about the mission of Hargrave, looks, looks forward to establishing relationships with the TACs and the, and the cadets, uh, getting to know them and uh, accomplishing our mission about uh, developing leaders of character. Um, uh, First Sergeant Remus, who joined us uh, last week, um, he's an Army National Guard uh, infantry first sergeant, uh, multiple tours uh, to I Iraq or Afghanistan, um, comes to us out of Lynchburg, Virginia, uh, where he's been for, you know, past 15 years or so. Um, uh, wife and kids and grandkids. He's uh, in his uh, mid-50s and... Um, Excited to have him on board. Uh, Corporal uh, Captain Gallivan is a Marine. Uh, he comes to us from Riverside Military Academy where he worked there for a couple years. Uh, they downsized because of COVID uh, and basically um, had to let go about 60 people. Uh, so uh, he and his wife, uh, his wife's a veterinary uh, tech technician. Uh, so he arrived on Monday. Uh, she's coming up around Thanksgiving. Uh, he comes with a lot of good experience from Riverside Military Academy. Uh, when he came to interview, he stayed on campus for about a day and a half, and uh, the cadets that had a chance to interact with him uh, had nothing but positive things to say. He's got a great disposition, really wants to see the cadets uh, succeed, but also you know, holds them accountable, teaches them, and uh, makes them uh, learn some self-discipline. So very excited to have him on board. Um, Captain Washington is a retired soldier, but was also a Marine for a number of years. Uh, he is also a, uh, has a uh, bachelor's in social work and is uh, finishing up his master's in social work and counseling. Uh, he was at a school in uh, the Raleigh-Durham area and uh, that school uh, was closing uh, mainly due to COVID, it was a day school. Um, and, uh, so he has a wife and, uh, two boys and a college age daughter. Uh, so we're excited to have, uh, them be a part of the, uh, Hargrave family. Um, I think that's, uh, I think that'll give you some of the five W's of those folks. Hopefully that answered the question. Uh, getting into the, the details of um, November, December, if the young men come home on 25 November, will they have any home at-home assignments that they can work on six weeks at home? 
is a long time to be away from academics, or certainly maybe you can ask them to do some winter reading. Um, let, let me say that uh, <laughs> the, for the unpopular answer for the cadets, but exactly for us as, as the adults, certainly. Um, that if, if it comes to fruition that December is a time away from campus, uh, we do not expect that to be a time away from learning. Um, I think in, in a uh, world that values a, a whole person and a holistic approach to life, um, that then the, um, you know, we need to uh, take advantage of these opportunities to flesh out the, uh, the portfolio, so to speak. Um, are the cadets having in-person classes right now or online? They are in-person. Um, there's one exception where uh, one of our faculty, uh, due, due to a family medical uh, issue, is at home um, uh, uh, kind of running classes here on, on campus with a substitute here on campus, but uh, the rest of our classes are, are in person. Um, who is leading the senior workshop tomorrow? See if I can squeeze a couple questions in here. Um, that would be Mrs. Pugh. Um, uh, Ms. McAllister. So both Ms. Pugh and Mc, Mc, McAllister are former college, uh, um, uh, college English instructors. Uh, and so they'll bring a lot of both um, school of hard knocks, if I can say it that way, without getting myself in trouble, uh, practicality and pragmatism, as well as uh, making sure that, that uh, the standard for the writing is acceptable and appropriate for, for the college application. Um, then also uh, Mr. Beshe, uh, who is our college guidance counselor, We'll be working uh, with them. We'll also have uh, Sergeant Major Dooley um, and two other faculty that I don't remember off the top of my head. Essentially, we have two faculty members per room so they can kind of rotate around and try to maximize um, contact. Uh, every college application is somewhat unique uh, because every young man is somewhat unique. So um, the uh, Okay, um, okay this, this uh, other chat question is uh, a little bit, multiple questions here. Uh, one question is, is it too late to register for the 1024 uh, ACT? Yes, I believe that unfortunately that, that deadline has passed. I guess this one's not too down in, down in the weeds, but I'll let this one uh, go to you, sir. Um, how's that for a little bit of prep time? Um, there are, I think, CDC guidelines for human tracing to not account for cadets sharing bathrooms and showers with those who've tested positive. Um, I'm concerned that those sharing such facilities will not necessarily have been called up for testing. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, how, how deep do you want to go on this, sir? Um, I know that we've got quite a policy. I just don't know if this is the venue for it. Um, if this is, I can't tell if this is talking about the barracks or in quarantine. Um, uh, we have a limit to uh, who can share a bathroom at a given time, and then we uh, spray down the bathroom three times a day uh, with um, Virix. So um, uh, again, um, I'd have to talk with the nurse, uh, but when you do contact tracing and we're talking about sharing bathrooms and showers, it's about the frequency of that. Um, and also uh, the CDC's guidelines when I think what we're referencing here is household contact and the, uh, uh, the uh, frequency of that uh, household contact is, is different in a real home compared to uh, a barracks um, where they're on, you know, people can be all kinds of different schedules. And again, um, 
the cleanliness of our bathrooms, you know, again, occurs three times a day. Uh, basically, after every meal, uh, we're, we're spraying the bathrooms down. So um, that, that's how we view that in terms of contact tracing. All right. Uh, all right. And then, um, plenty of chat questions here. Do leadership positions count uh, as volunteer hours on college applications? <clears throat> um, I think that the, the idea is it depends. Um, I think on one level, the actual calling yourself uh, a leader, and so uh, then opens the conversation as to, well, what do you mean you're a leader? And so it, Hargrave's in, a, in an interesting position, uh, and what I would say is it always starts conversations. So if uh, hypothetically a young man says, well, you know, I'm, I'm a company commander, or I'm a battalion commander, or I'm a, a platoon commander, uh, a lot of students or a lot of college counselors or scholarship readers won't understand what that means. So then they say, well, this is sort of like being on student council. Okay, they understand what that means, but it's 24 seven. And so, um, so the point being is that the leadership positions for a cadet don't turn themselves on or off uh, according to uh, a big calendar. Um, they, they, are, they, they, they expose folks right, wrong, or indifferent um, to kind of the, the crucible of, um, uh, of, uh, of leadership. Then having said that, um, there are some leadership positions that I would legitimately count as volunteer hours, uh, as long as we can document what they're doing. And so, um, you know, if, if it's a, uh, you know, we have a uh, you know, person that is, the sp is helping a faculty member uh, run a club or a club activity, uh, the blood drive, for example, um, you know, that was being run by a cadet. Um, that cadet essentially logs in uh, 10 uh, volunteer hours uh, because of the work they did beforehand, uh, during and after the blood drive. Uh, the, the cadets uh, that were part of the blood drive, and, and that was um, you know, relatively straightforward, I guess, if you're an adult. But for a teenager, um, it may be a little bit of an eye opener where they are, um, you know, asking for some straightforward information about, you know, where's your blood donor card, et cetera, et cetera. And then the public actually opens up to them about how important it is to, to donate blood and why they donate and those types of things. So, uh, again, not trying to drift too far away from the original question, uh, but that's that's why I've kind of given you that that answer. Um, so. Um, I have another question from the academic side. Um, for students who are taking senior seminar, are they part of tomorrow's uh, workshop? Uh, and the answer to that is yes. Um, the workshop is specifically about applying to colleges. And so they should have a completed college application in their hand by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, and that's the target. And if they don't, then we'll know why. So. All right, um, I believe that uh, that's it right now for my college or for my chats. Um, yep, sorry. Uh, this one's for you, Colonel Brown. Uh, with potentially all weekends being closed, even after Christmas break, what does that mean for seniors with regard to uh, regular college visits or recruiting visits? Uh, maybe I should just jump in there and say no impact, um, but we'll, sir. We'll, we'll take those uh, as they come. We certainly are not gonna shut down folks from uh, being able to do that. It's really about limiting um, the back and forth from campus. Again, when I talked to the epidemiologist, um, he wasn't necessarily so, current, so concerned with our cadets. Uh, he's more concerned with uh, the, the preponderance of our population who um, may not be adhering uh, to the uh, protocols in public and, and therefore our, the more our cadets go off campus, the more they may be susceptible to those folks, not necessarily uh, their own uh, disregard, so. 
All right. Um, in the scenario where the semester could possibly end 11-25, does that mean that there would be no PG or varsity basketball until after Christmas break? Um, uh, I'll, I'll answer that because uh, uh, me and the athletic director have had this discussion. Um, the answer is potentially. Uh, however, um, if the basketball players, specifically the postgraduate, um, uh, decide uh, to create a bubble and stay on campus for a period of time and play and be able to play some games, they will. We have some strict protocols for the PG basketball team to play an away game. And we also have strict protocols for anybody who may come to Hargrave and play in terms of testing prior to arrival, uh, you know, things of that nature. So, um, again, the answer is potentially uh, varsity basketball really is going to be dependent on uh, other schools' availability to play. And the earliest I've seen some of them available to play is the middle of December, which was literally about four days before our break would started in the first place. So, um, again, we're kind of taking it uh, – day by day as schools finish up their um, fall sports, we see how sports will play out um, in the winter. It's really about the, the willingness for me um, to allow our cadets to, to be posed against risk. Um, and that really then dovetails into parents, uh, their willingness to have their cadets uh, participate in interscholastic sports um, with no guarantee that uh, many other schools, uh, although they may do a lot of risk mitigation, you know, obviously cannot get rid of all risk. So it's definitely a slippery slope. All right. Um, Uh, do parents see the college, uh, the first college application, uh, thinking the kid may forget accomplishments? So uh, it sounds like your child might be like mine. Um, <clears throat> the idea is that we don't usually just fire off the first college application. So I would uh, make sure that your son uh, loops you in. Um, and what happens is, uh, yeah, cadets are expected uh, to make a, what's called a brag sheet, um, which is essentially the way that we go internally to make sure they haven't forgotten something significant. And so you can have him share with, uh, uh, your, your son share with you his, uh, his brag sheet. And, um, and, and again, from that, that, that will help. Um, the Common App does allow uh, students to do a little bit of modification. Um, and then kind of uh, goes and, and breaks down on a case-by-case -case basis then as to whether it's a part one, part two, or part three for college applications. So, um, all right. So I think um, from, again, we can continue to, you can continue to chat, message me, uh, but I'll try again to uh, open this up for, um, Uh, uh, open this up for in-person uh, conversation. So I'm um, sorry, I just got a, another chat message, uh, maybe expressing a little bit of concern or frustration that their son doesn't uh, always loop them in. So <laughs> um, since I know uh, your son, uh, I might have a, a knife hand talk with, with him uh, about uh, keeping you looped in, ma'am. So, um, so let's uh, move on to the live mic area so if you were to unmute your microphone um, then um, we can call on you and uh, again if you have a question that you think uh, may not be interest of interest to the whole group uh, we will stay behind after we dismiss and then we can answer those questions in private also or semi-private so if you hit your unmute button you'll be able to ask a question if you don't want to uh, thumb type uh, like a mad woman or mad man
Uh, all right, Mrs. Uh, Dixon. Hi, uh, so I just want a little bit of clarification. So in a scenario where um, once they come home for Thanksgiving and they don't go back, does that mean the school year ends and then Saturday classes are going to be done to kind of get to that scenario? No, um, the Saturday classes would happen before um, Thanksgiving. So between now and Thanksgiving, we would have uh, some degree of Saturday classes to make up for the time that we would lose in December. Uh, Dr. Tung and I have already okay. gone, gone through the calendar uh, and now he's going to have the uh, faculty chairs, department chairs uh, go through it. So once they left for Thanksgiving, uh, about the only thing they may have to do that we're still working on is maybe do uh, a virtual final or assessment um, from a timing perspective. So, but again, we're still working those details out, but that would be about it. They would go home for Thanksgiving. Uh, that Monday, uh, they may have some finals to complete online. Okay. All right, thanks. Yeah, we do want to be pragmatic about the fact that a lot of young men, if you start saying uh, vacation and you take them off of campus, um, we, we really know that that's really challenging for them to show their best on, a, uh, on something like a term paper or um, a uh, cumulative exam. So the uh, department chairs are definitely um, energized over the opportunities and uh, creating a uh, set of uh, risk benefit analyses for, for Colonel Brown to, uh, to review. All right. Um, so there was a question about Chromebooks, um, and uh, I do appreciate um, some of the uh, other feedback here, how best to proceed with securing Chromebook. I guess apparently um, today is Prime Day, and so I don't know, um, not, not being a great shopper, uh, whether or not there are any great deals on Chromebooks. Um, we do have a lot, have had a lot of frustration in that our Chromebook supplier has um, has really um, uh, fallen through for us. I, I guess I don't want to say that unprofessionally, but um, you know, every every week it's going to be oh, I'll be here in a day, and then it becomes a week later and two weeks later. And so, um, you know, kind of the more, most pessimistic view is that maybe March. Um, so we've got another a non-commercial, non-industrial um, institutional supplier of Chromebooks lined up. Um, and so we're, we're still working that problem. Um, I don't know. Uh, again, I think here's the problem is that the, the, pro the, the um, individual market for Chromebooks is um, blowing away the institutional supply chain. And so, um, so Amazon and, um, and, inst and uh, uh, individuals who are expected to provide their own Chromebooks or schools that are buying thousands of Chromebooks have essentially depleted the ready supply. Um, we even try to go and get them at Sam's Club and Walmart and things like that. And, um, you know, there, there's, a, there's a limit to how many we can get, and as well as being first come, first serve. So, so Jim, um, I, just, uh, I just ordered one from Amazon. I get it October 17th. All right. As you were talking. <laughs> I may right. raffle it off to one of the parents. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that would be a, a great thing. So hopefully that, that helps um, you know, Amazon Prime Day. Another. Uh. All right. Um, all right, any other questions? Uh, the, there was a question here about when is the next ACT. Um, the next ACT is going to be um, in the, I'm sorry, it's going to be in the, in the spring. Um, so I don't know, I don't have that date uh, hiding here on my, my uh, wall calendar. Um, the other question was about the ASVAB. And, and we don't um, offer the ASVAB on campus. The ASVAB has to be administered, I think, at a recruiting office. And so those uh, students that need the ASVAB 
um, that would be another reason for them to go home on a closed weekend. Um, it's very much uh, dependent on the availability of the recruiter. So, uh, Jim, we are. I did have a Marine recruiter on campus this week, and uh, he is working to put together an ASVAB date for any of our cadets that uh, may be interested in taking it. Okay. So when we have those details, then we'll, we'll push those on. Um, there is a question here about whether or not there will be an alternate date um, to an open weekend. Um, and uh, the apology was, was that uh, this particular person had jumped on a little bit late. And so, um, sir, I, I think again for these are things that our cadets uh, like to track, and so if you could uh, answer that question. Okay. Uh, currently, uh, <clears throat> there will not be an alternate date for an open weekend. Um, Ten third uh, Halloween weekend is is closed. Um, if a if a parent has a an issue or concern about a, a travel requirement based on, um, you know, cert, uh, personal circumstances, I'm, I'm more than happy to um, address those circumstances on an individual basis. All right. Um, Mrs. Tucci. Yes. Um, can't do a Zoom without a question from me, right? Um, <clears throat> I know that nobody has a crystal ball, but I do know that you have your finger on the pulse when it comes to perhaps being privy to other conversations with, which allow you to forecast out what the likelihood is for college climates this coming year. I know some of our family members have decided to use this year as a gap year and not go immediately into college. Are you catching any conversation at all about with vaccinations and all that, or is that just really so far out of the gamut right now to grasp what's so, happening for college entrances coming up for either the summer or in for the next fall? It, it's interesting you bring that up, Ms. Tucci, because I, when I talked to the epidemiologist last night, we kind of touched on that, that topic. And a lot of it is dependent uh, first on colleges. Every college takes its own approach to how they're handling this. Um, I'll give you an example. There's a Virginia school uh, where they're open in-person learning, uh, but they will, they will kick a student out if they don't follow the mask wearing policy. They just literally expel them uh, if they show up in class without a mask on. Uh, and then there's other schools that, you know, find that balance between in-person and uh, online. And then there's other colleges that strictly do online. Um, so that's the whole gamut. We, we did talk about vaccines and the epidemiologist uh, mentioned, he said, the best way to get the vaccine sooner or vice later is to have some underlying condition uh, that would put you closer to the front of the line. The, the first people that will get the vaccines are, are gonna be first responders and healthcare professionals, nice. obviously. And then after that, it goes to the highest risk uh, people um, to which you know, teenagers are gonna be at the bottom of the, uh, bottom. <laughs> yeah. the bottom of the list. So I wouldn't expect um, uh, vaccinations being available to high school students um, you know, I can't, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know how much they're going to produce and how they're going to distribute, but right. uh, at the rate they're talking about it, I don't, I don't think uh, high school kids will have a vaccine prior to the start of next year, but uh, you never know when that uh, drug machine starts churning, it can, can potentially, uh, you know, pump out quite a few uh, uh, vaccines. So uh, we're just kind of playing that by ear. Um, but every college is addressing the COVID situation differently. Um, and so it just depends on um, what college somebody's interested in knowing what their, what their posture is. Well, thank you for that. I mean, the options being weighed, uh, obviously, in Military Academy are 
you know, how is the military handling it, going to military service versus private college versus uh, military uh, academy that would be at the college level, ROTC, that type thing. And then again, um, I think mon many of the articles I've read actually this week were more about colleges still charging the same tuition for the virtual experience when the real benefit is the, you know, the inculcation of being an on-campus student and so forth. So anyway, um, this is all unprecedented. So we're all trying to field the same questions at the same time. But I just thought perhaps you might even know as far as the military recruitments, how are they handling the, 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 mil so the, the military is moving forward following uh, all of the CDC guidelines. They're, uh, they haven't, um, they haven't uh, shortened the pipeline. Um, I think they're just approaching a little bit differently uh, to, to ensure the social distancing can occur and things of that nature. Um, but they're, they're, the machine is still churning out Marines, uh, soldiers, sailors, and airmen. Uh, the service academies, uh, uh, I can only speak to the Naval Academy. They're, I don't want to say business as usual, but you know they have in-person instruction and they're right. managing all of that. So uh, I don't see them slowing down. I was just in Annapolis today. So yeah, everybody's masking, but everybody's out and about as normal. Okay. All right, very good. Um, anybody else have a question if they wanna um, figure out where the unmute button is? All right. Um, again, our desire is to uh, make sure that parents have questions, uh, don't leave with unanswered questions. But um, looking at the lull right now, um, let me just uh, tell you that uh, I'm going to end up closing questions, turn this over to Colonel Brown for any final remarks, and then uh, remind you that we won't leave and turn the lights off until uh, the last parent is uh, out the uh, Zoom, Zoom meeting door. It's okay to say it that way. So, uh, sir. No, I just uh, echo Jim's uh, thanks for everybody attending. I know there's not a large number here, but we just had parent teacher conferences. So I understand that. Uh, we'll again, keep the uh, lines of communication open. Uh, I welcome any and all emails or phone calls uh, to either myself or any member of the staff. Uh, if you have questions or concerns or, or don't understand anything, uh, we're more than happy to have a conversation. Um, We'll continue to navigate this um, uh, every single day. I, I watch and, and see how can we make sure we're providing the safest environment for the cadets, knowing that uh, when we have these COVID blips, uh, it, it hinders uh, the atmosphere on campus. I, but I think the boys have understood that and learned some hard lessons over the last few weeks. And um, I'm, uh, I'm hopeful that they will apply those lessons learned and we can just continue to press forward um, but I, I think the overall tenor for the cadets, uh, at least yesterday and today, was a very positive one. Uh, I think when the boys uh, come out of quarantine and are able to get back with their buddies, they're, they're sending the message that, hey, let's do what we need to do. So um, that's a good thing. Uh, so I'm excited about moving forward. And, and again, we'll get back to you on the whole Thanksgiving break uh, as soon as I can. All right. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Jim, I forgot to mention that um, the Veterans Day Parade will be um, either a live stream event or a recorded event. Our plan is to have staff and faculty uh, show up to be the audience and then have the uh, cadets um, run through the Veterans Day Parade in honor of our veterans. And again, to either live stream that or record it and uh, make it available uh, very quickly after it's, uh, it's conducted. So. I just want folks to know that they will get to see their cadets perform a parade, um, at least virtually. All right. Um, okay, sir. So um, excited about that. And uh, at this time, I wish you all a good night. May I just insert one more question? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's quite all right. 
Um, due to the Parents Weekend being canceled and the acknowledgements for honor roll and merit awards in the pinning ceremony, has that occurred on campus otherwise? Or will that be part of the Veterans Day celebration and recognitions therein? Yes, we're considering either uh, splitting those events up or combining them, combining them with the Veterans Day uh, parade. Um, again, we're discussing those options. I, I, for me, I, I kind of want to recognize the boys sooner, vice later, for their academic achievements, and not wait that long. I think uh, it's good to recognize that right away. Uh, whereas the cadet crest ceremony uh, could potentially happen virtually as well, but we're looking through all that. Yes, yeah, so as an example, the um, the honor rolls uh, certainly getting pinned by your uh, family member is really important to a lot of our cadets but they also have kind of a pragmatic side um, because they get uh, honor roll privileges uh, because of their demonstrated um, success academically. So there, there's a little bit of, 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 of things going on there. It's not just all deferred uh, reward. Um, and so can we try to, try to be pragmatic? Well, right. I, just, uh, I wanna put a feather in, um, gosh, the Spanish teacher, Spanish professor, um, Louis Zerpra. I just wanna give him ultimate praises. I had one of the most invigorating conversations with him at uh, the uh, parent-teacher conferences. And it, I'd have to say it was almost like divinely providential. It was, it was inc I was very impressed and I uh, just wanted to give a, you know, put a feather in his cap. All right. Thank you for that feedback. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and he'll, he'll, he'll appreciate uh, uh, that also. Yes, well, thank you again. All right. All right, so folks, um, I think uh, we can bid you a good night, and um, I know that you, you have busy lives that, to get back to. And maybe some cadets to email and ask them about their brag sheets. So, Mrs. Ponton, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I, I just saw um, Andrew rolling around with uh, multiple packs. Um, I'm not sure how, how you start out uh, <laughs> heading from one building to the other and then uh, within 11 days have uh, six sacks worth of laundry, pillows, and personal gear. And, I'm not and, sure either, but the nurse said it took him a while to take a couple of, um, she said he went back and forth a couple times. <laughs> Amy, you, you, Amy, you would be so proud. Guess what? One of the first things he did when he left the infirmary and, and got over to the uh, main campus, he went to the barber shop to get a haircut. I didn't hear you. Can, can you repeat it again? I'm sorry. I didn't hear what oh, you said. <laughs> the, 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 one of the first things he did when he left the infirmary and came over to the main campus, um, was go to the barbershop to get a haircut. How about that? Oh my gosh.